uh, as uh, it gets, um, like as I said earlier, the the you know, I think you can always think of like you know, it's it's this was like kind of. What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an excellent day today despite the bloody, bloody markets. We do know that when there is blood in the streets, that's when you want to buy. But is this the end of the dump? What is happening? Bitcoin down 11%, Ethereum down 11%, Dogecoin down 14%, Polkadot Actually doing quite well today, interestingly enough, but you can see right here, we had this major, major dump for Bitcoin. We were up at around $58,000. We dumped below $46,000 over here on Bybit. We have had a slight recovery, trying to push back above $50,000. And why did this happen? Well, most of you by now, of course, know the Tesla news. Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla has suspended vehicle purchases using Bitcoin. They are concerned about about rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining and transactions, especially coal, which has the worst emissions of any fuel. They also say that they are looking for other cryptocurrencies that use less than 1% of Bitcoin's energy per transaction. Now, is this why the market actually crashed? Well, in my previous video, I did say Bitcoin warning, this is very scary. And there were some things that technically and fundamentally were standing out to me saying that the markets were, in fact, due for a correction. So was it a coincidence? Was this actually what caused the crash? Some people are calling a conspiracy by Elon Musk how perfectly timed this tweet was. Does Tesla actually have some bigger plans? Well, we're going to go over all that today. I'm going to let you know exactly what I'm thinking about the market markets today, whether or not we're looking for a recovery, are we looking for even lower levels? I'm going to let you know all that. And also one thing that finally happened to Bitcoin with this price action that we have been talking on this channel for months. Well, it finally happened, guys. And I don't want to say we called it, but we kind of called it. So that being said, stick around. We'll make today's video super quick. If you want to know my take on what is happening today, definitely get subscribed to this channel. If you haven't, we go over Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news almost every day. And I always let you know exactly what I'm looking at in the Bitcoin charts. And I also let you know the levels that we are looking to trade this because there are lots of opportunities to make money, even if the price does go down. So if that sounds good, get subscribed. And without further ado, let's dive into the charts. Now, I want to start off with the charts today, even though I know there is a lot of news, you know, talking about Elon Musk and Tesla, we're going to get to that. But let's have a look at what's actually happening right now, because let's be honest, most traders don't care about the news. They're just looking at the charts. If we have a look right here, we are now actually in a red candle month. You can see it does look like maybe the top is in for Bitcoin. We are looking for a correction. Could we come down all the way to these crazy, crazy low levels of $30,000? Well, Let's discuss this. Now, I did tell you guys that we were looking for a move to the downside. I explained to you that Bitcoin has been doing this sideways choppy action, and essentially, whatever pattern we're forming, we break to the opposite side. So like, I, and I said this, I've been saying this for weeks. If you guys haven't, just go check the videos. I mean, you can see right here, as we had this falling wedge, we got to the bottom, we had the breakout, ascending uh, channel, break down, descending channel, break up, descending wedge channel, break down. And then we were finally putting in this giant ascending wedge. And I told you guys we were looking for a breakout to the downside. We had our breakout to the downside, right? Now, for everyone asking about how my position is with my long, I'm actually still accumulating. I told you it's a very low leverage position, which yes, I am still bullish on Bitcoin. On the macro, absolutely nothing has changed. I mean, if we go back here, we have a look at this. There's nothing bearish about this. What? We're putting in some red candles up at the top. Okay. Markets need a cool off, right? But zooming in, we were talking about this diamond pattern. Statistically, diamonds do tend to be reversals. They do tend to break to the downside. And as you can see right here, we got to the end of the diamond and we did come down. However, we did have a perfect, and I mean literally perfect retest of this previous resistance. Flip support right here after the dump from 58 down to 44. And if we follow this trend line right here, boom, we had exactly our bounce right here, which is perfect 
healthy market movement. You can see right here, we did have that bounce and you could argue that we might even be forming a bit of an ascending triangle right here. We do need a little bit more time to see how this plays out. There still is that possibility that we fall down into this blue box territory right here. And I wouldn't start getting super bearish unless we fall below $40,400. Now I know that's quite a low level from this point. Actually from top to bottom right now, we already have had about a 28% correction, which is what you would expect in Bitcoin. If we were to go to the top of the blue box territory, that would bring us to exactly our 30%, 31% level, about $44,000, $45,000 Bitcoin. I don't foresee Bitcoin going any lower than that. However, a lot of people think we're gonna have this just like crazy, amazing V-shaped bounce back to 60K and higher. I'll tell you what, I do think that we're in that sort of phase where the market is looking to fake out investors. It is looking to make you doubt your purchase, to make you doubt Bitcoin, to get you scared. Why have we been consolidating for so long? How come Bitcoin you know, can't seem to break above the $60,000 level. And this is going to get a lot of weak hands to sell their Bitcoin, shake them out of the markets. And we've been talking about this fake out, shake out before the breakout, right? A lot of people uh, that have been watching know that we were expecting this type of a price movement. So I'm not necessarily expecting a massive explosive move to the upside. Could be wrong. Anything can happen. More than likely, we can we, we probably continue to trade sideways and actually even dip down maybe once more real quick just to shake out those weak hands. But I do believe that ultimately we are still in a trend. In fact, you can see right here, we are currently trading between the two largest areas of the VPVR. I know it's behind my head. You probably can't see it over here on the futures. And, you know, if I actually zoom in right here, this is actually a very safe area for me. This is sort of an area of discovery, right? We're sort of bouncing between those two levels. So as far as I'm concerned over on the futures chart, I think we did close the CME futures gap. Some people were arguing, well, there was like $100 difference. Good enough in my book. I think that was good enough. I think right now what we're really looking for is to sort of maintain above this level over here. So 45,500, that's where we need to hold above. Uh, I do think we could wick below it as a fake out, maybe to this wick at around 42,700, but I do wanna see a daily close remain above the $45,500 level. Same thing over here on the spot charts as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, guys, if you are looking to trade this, Obviously, essentially, you know, you just want to ladder in on these lower levels, which is why you don't go in with super high leverage. You go in with 7x, 10x, 25x. You're going to get liquidated, okay? 3x is really where you should be trading. 5x if you're more experienced. If you want to learn how to do this, you can check out Bybit. Bybit is my preferred exchange for, uh, you know, Bitcoin trading. I do have a tutorial popping up above. There is $200 in bonuses. And also don't forget if you're trading altcoins, if that's your thing, Femex is having a $2,000 trading bonus. Obviously it does require your deposits. The more you deposit, the more you get. Same thing. Just read the you know, information. I also have a tutorial on Femex that's also popping up above extra $200 as well in bonuses as well. But uh, this is essentially what we've been waiting for. And I was talking about the 21 exponential on the weekly. This is a level that is very, very important to me. It is the level that carried us through the entire bull run of 2017. And if I zoom in right here, you could see that is exactly, I mean, guys, down to like literally maybe a $50 difference, we touched it. This is actually a good thing. I know people are freaking out. We had a nice reset. You want to see these resets. Sometimes we even hug it. Look, occasionally we come down and we hang around on here for quite some time. This could be another boring consolidation. We could consolidate sideways for another month. Are you prepared for that kind of boredom, that kind of you know, uncertainty. That's exactly what these markets are doing. They are coiling up just like we did down here before having the massive blast off. In fact, if I actually go over to the uh, BLX, let me go over to BLX actually and show you what this looks like over there because this is gonna give you a much better picture. Now, obviously BLX is a day behind, so we haven't fully come down and touched it just yet. By tomorrow, we will have touched it. Keep, you know, like I said, oh, that's a week behind actually because uh, we're on the weekly. 
and it's also a day behind. Uh, depends on what, what it literally depends on which one you're on. But you can see right here, you know, during the 2017 bull run, multiple times, this is where we came down, you know, support, bounce, support, bounce, support, bounce, support, bounce, support, bounce. And finally, when we finally did fall below it, uh, you know, after the all-time high in 2017, this actually became resistance, resistance, multiple week resistance before the massive epic dump, okay? And you can see right here, we've had it as, once again, support, support, and my bet is that we are gonna be holding support here again. So my long term is, of course, bullish. My short term is questionable bearish to neutral short term. So short term, I'm not expecting new all-time highs, you know, next week. Um but yeah, with it, like by next month, absolutely, absolutely. So right now I think it is a gift. I think there are some good opportunities for bounces. I think Bitcoin could bounce back to around that $55,500 level. Um if you are in a low leverage long right now, um I wouldn't really be panicking depending on when you got in. But once again, like I said, if you guys don't know what you're doing, check out those tutorials and make sure you subscribe because I do go over these levels every single day. I'll let you guys know exactly what I'm looking at, exactly what I'm doing. So no, I'm not panicking right now. Now, like Nick Ward pointed out, you know, if you actually break down, let's get back to the news, Tesla. So noise, 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 signal. Tesla will not be selling any Bitcoin. So it turns out that they are actually not looking to sell Bitcoin. In fact, there were rumors circulating that they even bought more Bitcoin. I don't know. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, those rumors have been validated. I don't want to spread FUD or rumors on this, but I was just hearing about that. Maybe who knows what exactly is happening. But at the end of the day, they're not selling their Bitcoin. Now, Martini guy said, Elon intended to cause maximum damage to Bitcoin. He tweeted at the end of the financial day in San Francisco, as soon as traders clock off, causing mass panic among retail traders, this was a calculated move. Now, it was interesting that we were getting to the end of that diamond pattern. I was talking about, you know, these clown markets, essentially, with all these different cryptos. And essentially, you know, if you guys are following me, I said, not worth commenting on Elon Musk's disgusting abuse of influence and lack of understanding of Bitcoin, regardless, the markets needed a washout. This whole space has turned into a meme coin clown market shit show. That being said, Bitcoin has survived way worse. I'm buying here and I have bought more Bitcoin and I have added to my long and I did believe, and if you guys watched my video from the other day, you know that we had a very scary market happening. I mean, you literally have shit coins pumping with absolutely no fundamentals. There was an on paper billionaire that created a scam to token just for fun went to like a billion dollar market cap another guy you probably saw him created a token literally called scam it was like super cool automated money or something like that literally the token was called scam pumped right this is not sustainable. This is not signs for a healthy market. We need a shakeout. We need some kind of a pullback, right? And getting back over here, uh the interesting thing is uh, you know getting onto the whole conspiracy thing exclusive, and this literally came out at the exact same time. Tesla seeks entry into a U.S. renewable fuel credit market, according to sources. So, do all of these have anything to do to play out with each other? Well, the interesting thing that I do want to point out is that if we actually look right here, you know, he talks about we are also looking at other cryptocurrencies that use less than one percent of Bitcoin's energy per transaction. Now. This this is one of the oldest arguments in the book. The Bitcoin energy, Bitcoin waste energy, waste electricity, we have gone over this. This is nothing new. In fact, more, I think it's like 60 to 70% or something of most of the miners are looking at renewable, using renewable, or trying to find ways for renewable resources regardless anyway, okay? So that's number one. Number two, Bitcoin's energy, the proof of work, is what actually creates the security of the network. If you had a, a coin that had less than 1% of Bitcoin's energy per transaction, that network would be less than 1% secure as Bitcoin. And you're not going to be having a global store of value, a global network of transferring value across the world with less than 1% of what Bitcoin has right now. That's what gives Bitcoins its stability. And also, don't get confused. People 
think, oh, there's more people making transactions. That's why the energy is consuming. Wrong again. Bitcoin could be run on one node with one miner on one computer. The choice of the miners to contribute to the hash rate to the system, that is their own doing. They choose to do that. And by creating that competition on the blockchain, we have the hash rate going up, which is why we're consuming more power, okay? Don't get it twisted that the network can't grow it doesn't work like that. Do research on why Satoshi chose proof of work. And a lot of people, you know, have been, you know, going against this. Now, Mark Cuban, he says that at the Mavericks, we're going to continue to accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Doge because we know that replacing gold as a store of value will actually continue to help the environment. Shrinking big bank and coin usage will benefit society and the environment as well. And it's not like Satoshi didn't know this. Guys, this is from August 7th, 2010. Shout out to document uh, documenting Bitcoin for, you know, bringing this to light. This is from Satoshi Nakamoto. He says, Bitcoin minting is thermodynamically perverse. It's the, this is the you know topic. And he says, it's the same situation as gold and gold mining. The marginal cost of gold mining tends to stay near the price of gold. Gold mining is a waste, but that waste is far less than the utility of having gold available as a medium of exchange. I think the case will be the same for Bitcoin. The utility of the exchanges made possible by Bitcoin will far exceed the cost of electrical uh, of electricity used. Therefore, not having Bitcoin would be the net waste. Proof of work has the nice property that it can be relayed through untrusted middlemen. We don't have to worry about a chain of custody of communication. It doesn't matter who tells you, you know, it, uh, he says it doesn't matter who tells you a longest chain, the proof of work speaks for itself, right? And yeah, I get it. Let's move to proof of stake. Proof of stake sounds great on the surface. Yes, it will reduce energy costs, but proof of stake once again just puts hands into the power of the wealthy. Whoever can have the biggest bag of the proof of stake coin will have the biggest say in the coin's future. Whereas having a lot of hash rate will give you more rewards, but at the end of the day, what dictates the actual blockchain is the length of the chain, the proof of work, and we as as people have a choice which chain we choose to use. Hence why people are using Bitcoin SV and using Bitcoin Cash. Why? No idea, but that's the beauty of free will and choice and proof of work. So this is just a twisted argument. Actually, Anthony Pompliano is going to be going over on, um, I think he's going to be going on CNBC or something talking about it when he does I'll obviously post that video, but you know, while all this FUD is happening in the background, we have Deutsche Bourse, et cetera, started trading physically backed Bitcoins in their ETP. No one seems to be talking about this, but this is happening in the background. They say, Iconic's mission is to drive the adoption of crypto assets by creating trustworthy investment vehicles for investors to seamlessly gain exposure to the evolving asset class. We are elated to see our Bitcoin ETP listed on Germany's flagship market and look forward to working with our partners and regulators to bring more products forward for crypto-hungry investors. And no, they're not doing this on paper. They're not doing it to save energy. They're doing it with actual physical. Physical Bitcoin, backed Bitcoin, physical Bitcoin. This increases the demand. This is amazing. This is brilliant news. Probably got overshadowed by the Elon Musk news, but this is the big news of the day. And for all my friends out there that think that Bitcoin is dying, well, if we head on over to 99bitcoins.com, according to Bitcoin obituaries, Bitcoin has died 412 times, or at least it has been declared dead by the media. And uh, yeah, here we are today and Bitcoin is still surviving. The network is the most secure it's ever been. And Elon Musk has not been able to send the price to zero. So that being said, guys, it is still a beautiful day for Bitcoin. If you are a long-term hodler, then this dip right here is just an opportunity for you to buy, which is exactly what I will be doing. Obviously, at some point, if we do have, you know, a higher time frame reversal, something that I think we should be concerned about, I will let you know, but I'm not seeing that just yet. In fact, this was an expected dip. Regardless of the Elon Musk news, we were looking at a bit of a bearish formation. We were looking for a bit of a retest of some of these lower levels. And don't forget, 
At the end of the day, what is the saying? The trend is your friend until the end. The trend has not changed. And finally, like most traders would say, show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. Maybe we were just looking for that bit of news to actually dump. At the end of the day, Bitcoin is still consolidating. We are still in a bull market. I am still bullish. I am still buying the dips. Nothing has changed. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. So that is it for me today. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You are why I continue to make these updates in the first place. If you are interested in learning how to trade these markets, remember, you can make money when Bitcoin goes up as well as when Bitcoin goes down. If you want to learn how to do this profitably as well as responsibly, make sure that you check these tutorials popping up right here, right now. That's it for me. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out. Thank <laughs> you.